In this video, I'll tell you what I carry in my doctor's bag. Ow! Ow! Oh. In this video, I'll tell you what I carry in my doctor's bag. Welcome back to my channel. I've received literally hundreds of requests to make this video, so thank you so much to all of my followers for that. I don't think they'll buy that. Okay, so, so no one actually requested this, but I thought I'd go full swing into the whole YouTuber thing, and I also figured it might be interesting for you to see what a typical GP carries to work each day. So let's get into it. First up, the bag. Now, I know that some GPs try to carry these massive old school trunks to fit everything humanly possible, but I've managed with a slim bag like this very easily, and to be honest, I have no idea why other people carry so much extra stuff. I also have this handy little zip-up container for a few extra little things, including my stethoscope, obviously. Now, I have a saying that you shouldn't ever trust a doctor that doesn't own their own stethoscope, which basically includes any surgeons. My brother actually bought this for me in med school as a gift, and it's got a little engraving on it, so uh, I've had this for about 11 or 12 years now. And fun fact, if you ever forget your headphones, you can actually use this to listen to music on your phone. Uh, I mean, you might look like a bit of a chump, but it does work. Next up is the ophthalmoscope and otoscope. Now this handy piece of technology is basically just a magnifying glass with a light on it. It's only really been updated in the past few years to something more advanced, and you can even get ones that actually attach to your phone. But this again was a gift to me by my previous supervisor, so I'm very happy to keep this one. So this is a closer look at the otoscope. It's basically a, a little device that you can put inside the ear once you put this attachment on, different sizes for adults and kids, and you just put it right in the ear and it feels uh, really tickly. And this attachment allows us to put on the ophthalmoscope head, and this allows us to look at the back of the eye, so we can see the retina, and we look at the blood vessels in the back of the eye. This gives us an idea if you've got certain conditions such as hypertension uh, or even diabetes, although to be honest, it's really, really hard to see with one of these and it's much easier when you get a photo taken at the optician. Now we get on to the big ones. These are to check your observations or your vitals, as they say in other countries. And these really give us a good idea about if you're really unwell. First up, a trusty thermometer. Now I personally think every household should own one of these. And if you don't have one, make sure you do get one and I'll put a link below. I love doing this. This is a SATS probe. So this allows us to check your oxygen level and your pulse rate. And it's really useful to tell if your oxygen level is dropping too low. For example, if you have a chest infection. And these have been really useful for people with COVID as well because their oxygen levels can drop. And again, I personally think anyone with asthma or COPD should have one of these. They're just so readily available and pretty cheap as well. So again, I'll put a link below. I've also got a tiny one which can be used for kids, although they're not always as accurate. Next up, we have the blood pressure monitor, and I think this is pretty self-explanatory. And again, honestly, I think this is something that most people should get once you reach a certain age. Because the difficult thing with detecting a raised blood pressure is that people usually don't have any symptoms. So by checking yourself every so often, you can hopefully stay on top of it. The last few extra things includes one of these, which is a tendon hammer, ow, and it's what we do to check your reflexes. In case you've got a condition in which your reflexes are a bit slower, or faster, or what we call brisker than usual. Those are usually neurological issues. I also carry one of these, which is a blood glucose monitor. Not everyone carries one of these, but I can find it's really useful because when you're worried about diabetes, it's a quick and easy check. Some gloves, obviously, because, well, sometimes you have to do some gross stuff. One of these, which is a tongue depressor, because when we need to look in the back of the mouth and kids are screaming, it's really hard. Also, one of these. This is a tuning fork, which is kind of cool. If you whack it really hard against something like this, you might be able to hear this, it's making a really high-pitched, fine-frequency sound, and we put that next to both ears to test your hearing. Another thing I also carry is a little tape measure. Usually this is used to measure baby's head circumferences, or sometimes if a patient has a mole on their skin, it's usual just to measure the exact size and then we can track that over time. So a uh, really handy one to keep. Some alcohol wipes, again, pretty self-explanatory. Also tend to carry some lubricant because, well, sometimes you have to do some examinations of some intimate areas, which could also get a bit gross. And that is pretty much it. Sometimes I also carry things like a urine pot if I need to get a sample of urine sent to the lab, um, but that's pretty much all that I carry in my bag. 
I thought I'd also cover a few things that I definitely don't carry and, and what doctors don't tend to carry in their bags these days. The first one of these is medication and generally it's not really recommended anymore except for very specific medications and generally it's only for doing a home visit to someone and commonly the out of hours team will keep a few medications. The problem with keeping your own stock of medication is that first it can go out of date and then get wasted and honestly I've never really been in a situation where I need to give medication to someone immediately because if they're that unwell they need to be in hospital and otherwise they can pick up the prescription from the pharmacy. The other big one is prescriptions and again we're not really recommended to keep these anymore because it can be open to abuse either from rogue doctors who prescribe things for people they shouldn't also, it's a bit of a risk if someone knows that you're a doctor and you keep a prescription pad in your bag, it could easily be stolen. So for that reason, I and most doctors don't carry these anymore. And I think that's pretty much everything. Like I said, I prefer not to carry absolutely everything. And, and honestly, this covers everything I need for a home visit or if I'm working as a locum in different practices. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And if so, make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons below. And if you've ever wondered what it's like to work in a COVID vaccination centre, check out this video. And if you've always wanted to know what one thing doctors might change about their work, check out this video. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. See ya.